no country can live without, especially a maritime country, can live without an efficient port. A port which is not productive is a bottleneck to the country's economy. International trade is the lifeblood of economic growth. Ghana is blessed with abundant natural resources, gold, bauxite, manganese, cocoa, fruit, and timber. Exported to the outside world, they earn vital foreign exchange for the country. But trade meets imports too. Raw materials like alumina, clinker, crude oil, iron, steel, even wheat, keep the wheels of industry turning. 90% of your country's trade passes with the port. And handling over 85% of all our exports and imports, Ghana's harbors are the very backbone of international trade. Ghana has two ports, Tema Port in the east and Takradi Port in the west. Situated in the heart of the mining, timber and cocoa growing areas of the country, Takradi has long been associated with export. If you look at the mining industry, Western region affects the bulk of the mineral resources and all the uh, produce from the mining companies are exported through Takradi port. Takradi handles almost 70% of all national export. But in recent years, import traffic has increased significantly particularly in the areas of containerized and rolling traffic and transit cargo. The strength of Chakra Port is number one, it's quick turnaround time. Security of cargo, security of uh, vessels and security of uh, human beings is paramount in the Chakra Port. And that's no idle boast. In Lagos, Abidjan is very dangerous. In Lagos, I never sleep. For four days, I never sleep, but here, I'm, I'm comfortable. Smaller than Tema Port, yes, it is. But being small does have its advantages. No congestion, no delays, nothing. We also have the rail link to the port, which is a major uh, strength. Because uh, if you look at carrying cargo into the hinterland, uh, with the railway, being properly developed and carrying cargo, it will save uh, importers and exporters a lot of revenue. Just 28 kilometers from the capital, Accra, Tema is a hugely busy port, handling almost 70% of all Ghana seaborne trade. Last year alone, 8.4 million metric tons of cargo passed through this harbor. Tema plays a vital role in ensuring a smooth flow of goods to and from Africa, the Americas, and Europe. Tema is very efficient. And that actually attracts uh, uh, our, our, our other customers from the inland countries to do business with us. Basically, a port is a backbone to industrial development. You can bring in the imports, the exports, you can bring in raw materials for processing. So, uh, industrial activity uh, grows very fast when you have ports. And now we call the ports uh, as logistic platforms where uh, you can add value, like you can bring in um, products, blend them, re-export. You can do a whole lot of, uh, carry out a whole lot of economic activities. Building on that impetus, government is establishing commercial free zones around both harbors to encourage export-based industry. Companies establishing themselves here do so under very favorable terms. All raw materials imported, for example, come in duty-free. In return, companies must export 70% of all they produce. The initiative will play a critical role in the government's gateway project, the master plan to turn Ghana into an export-based economy driven by investment and private sector growth. The gateway project, such as is conceived, is to help Ghana become the gateway, the road to the rest of the region, the hub for trade and investment. And that means that goods that are otherwise destined for Nigeria will come to us. Investment that are destined for Nigeria will come to us. And that means that we have to be competitive. 
it means that we have to be better than everybody else in the sub-region. So it's always important that as a port operator, you keep your cost at the barest minimum. And the only way you can do it to be an efficient port. To this end, the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, or GPHA, has embarked on a bold new plan, revolutionizing the way Ghana's ports are managed. Privatization. Privatization is something nobody wants to touch. If you go to Nigeria and read papers, you hear privatization and there's chaos. We have been able to do it, and I think we use the right approach. We educated people. Privatization is not selling of the port. It is just trying to increase the private sector participation in the port to increase competition and productivity. Which means lower costs and greater efficiency. GPHA is in the process of being transformed into a landlord authority and all cargo services will be in the hands of the private sector. We are geared up with the requisite equipment and uh, skilled labor to meet the challenge. There are now nine private Steve Doring companies vying for business in the port. We believe in uh, competition. When there is competition, there is competence. Every, every Steve Doring company's competence shows. They are the biggest beneficiaries, the uh, operators in the port, the shipping lines. They now have good equipment now, and that has also contributed to their performance. They are doing marvelously well. Ship turnaround time is of paramount importance, and at an average of 1.5 days, Ghana's ports have reason to be proud. When we come to the ship, you will see everybody just wants to deliver and deliver and deliver. Delivery is what it's all about. Cutting through red tape and bureaucracy, government has introduced a streamlined new system of cargo clearance. Unnecessary duplication between the Harbour Authority, Customs and Immigration Services and time-consuming paperwork has been replaced by GCNet, a computer network linking all major players, allowing shippers to clear their goods, quite literally, at the press of a button. Before you're talking about maybe spending one day, one full day, you know, processing just the documents in the long room. But now, with this new system, we're talking about 15 minutes. You sit in the office and press a button and, you know, custom has it. That one certainly enhances um, delivery of cargo. So does this new state-of-the-art X-ray scanner, a multi-million dollar investment designed to clear containers in the shortest time possible. Gone are the days of physical inspection, breakages, pilferage, and wasted man hours. Goods are now non-obtrusively examined and documents cleared at a single location and cargo is released from the port in under 30 minutes. The introduction of the scanner you know, has actually put Ghana you know, in the front front of our, forefront of our uh, clearance of our containers in the sub-region. Another pioneering private sector initiative is the creation of an off-port container terminal, easing port side congestion considerably. So now we are moving that activity away from the port to that location so that when we, are complete, we have completed that, that facility, every LCL or Gubit container will find its place there. Our setup is such that um, on, on a normal day, you do not need to spend more than four hours on our facility. If you are doing a house-to-house -house delivery and your documentations are in order, you, you may spend one hour here. When the divan area is finished, you won't see anybody entering the port. TCT has a static capacity of 3,500 TEUs, is linked to the GCNet computer system, and has its own on-site customs clearance point, making this a world-class facility, which is what the whole exercise is all about. When the container terminal is ready, when the other services and facilities we have put in place to receive containers are ready, we will be one of the most efficient ports in the sub region and Ghana is set to do exactly that. In the sea of uncertainty that is West Africa today, this country represents a core of stability and prosperity, making it the first choice destination of shippers around the world and the gateway to the entire sub-region. The stability that we are enjoying now 
It's attracting a lot of people to do transshipment, especially cargoes bound for the sub region. Messina Lines uses Ghana's ports largely for transshipment and have a dedicated port at Tema. Mother vessels call here twice a month with cargo from Europe, and smaller feeder vessels then ship it on to Cotonou, Lome, and Port Harcourt. Transit cargo is an area of huge growth, particularly freight to Ghana's landlocked neighbors in the north, Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso. Until recently, most of this transit trade was handled by rival West African ports, Lome and Abidjan in particular. But today, Ghana is stealing a march on its rivals. Ghana is very faster than Cotonou, than uh, Togo, than Nigeria, and uh, it's very, very, the work is very neat. For Burkinabe businessman Ibrahim Touré, discounted dues on transit goods and 21 days free storage are added incentives, as is security. And Ghana's ports pride themselves on that. The security here is perfect. It's one of the best. I'm telling you, you know that we are boasting, but we are doing our best. We make sure they are safe. We make sure we render good services to our customers so that we can win their confidence to do business in our ports. The security is very neat, no stealing nothing. And uh, the, the work is very, is very fast. 24 hours we are working, 24 hours, no stop. It's very good. We don't have problems here. So as a port, your main emphasis is to develop yourself to be able to receive ships and cargo and give them the right service that they require. Goods are cleared quickly through customs and are on the move in the shortest possible time. And here's another advantage for northern importers, Ghana's network of roads, stretching from the ports in the south to the northern border with Burkina Faso. In contrast with competing routes through Côte d'Ivoire and Togo, the Ghana corridor offers a comparatively smooth journey with a minimum of holdups at police and customs points. Another vital link in the Ghana Transit Corridor is the planned inland port at Bwankra near Kumasi in the Ashanti region. It will be linked to the harbours by both road and rail and have its own customs clearance service. Northern shippers will use Bwankra as a transshipment port instead of Tema or Tagrade. While the major share of transit cargo is moved by road, there are other options. Both ports are linked to Kumasi in the Ashanti region by rail and in the near future the line will be extended all the way to the north. And then there's the Volta Lake, stretching 415 kilometers from Akosombo in the south to Buipe, just 200 kilometers from the Burkina Faso border. A three-day journey by pusher tugs and barges designed to carry general freight, liquid bulk, and row-row cargo. Once fully operational, this integrated network of transport options serves not only to expedite shipment, but will also play a vital role in regional development. We have tremendous opportunity, not just to help Ghana, but also to advance the course of integration in the sub-region. And this we take very seriously. So our role in ECOWAS more than ever before is very critical for ECOWAS success. And this is a responsibility that we take seriously. We want to open up access, market access. And it's happening. We have attracted much more cargo in the last two years and we hope to continue as such. Takaradi port has seen the same acceleration. The increase uh, has been phenomenal. We believe that it will continue to grow because we're getting more and more people in the Sahelian countries making inquiries to pass their cargo through Takaradi port. And they're gearing up to meet the challenge. Over the next five years, and at a cost of $250 million, Takradi port is being upgraded from top to bottom. This will include the construction of two new container terminals fitted with state-of-the-art handling equipment, the dredging of the harbor to a depth of 12 meters, a new 11-meter oil berth, and direct access berths for handling bauxite, manganese, and clinker. That is definitely going to bring about improvement in efficiency at the harbor. Tema 2 is getting a major facelift. Development of state-of-the-art modern dedicated container terminals is very near completion. We are trying to construct a modern container terminal with state-of-the-art cranes, which will increase the handling capacity of containers, increase the turnaround time of containers, 
in that respect, you are giving ship owners the right service that they require. Three ship to shore gantry cranes capable of handling vessels with 15 containers breadth and four rubber tired gantries have already been installed on the terminal. The port now can receive large, uh, larger vessels with large volumes of cargo. That has actually contributed to our transshipment cargo's volumes also increasing. To handle these new volumes, a dedicated container terminal, 550,000 square meters in size, is planned, equipped with world-class technology. By 2010, the harbor will have doubled in size. The winds of change are blowing and Ghana's ports are on the move. And the vision of becoming the gateway to West Africa is no longer a dream. The gateway project envisages that Ghana will become the gateway to our sovereignty. And I believe from what we are doing, we are not far from that. I believe that come 2078, Ghana will be a true gateway to sovereignty. But what we have done so far, I have no doubt that we will be able to achieve this purpose.